find new expansion year two right what i'd like you to do is have a go at expanding that bracket to the power five please so you might want to pause it and have a go right so hopefully you remember how to expand using your year one skills and you can use what we call the binomial expansion formula from your formula books so that was great you can do a plus b to the power n expands to a to the power n and so on remembering that these parts just here you could potentially use your calculator and your n is in this case the power five so you should work yourself through that think about it the a value as you can see is just there in this case is number one and your b value just there is the same as 2x it's important to make sure you put the full 2x into the formula simple mistakes can be made if you don't put 2x into the formula because you may forget that the 2 is also getting squared so if you haven't put it in like that you may make some silly mistakes so once you're at that stage now you just need to start expanding this if you do it hopefully you would have got somewhere along this line just here and then once you expand it again and simplify it you end up with the full expansion starting with the number one and working down to 32x to the five so well done if you got that what i'd like you to do is the same skill again just have a go at expanding one plus x to the power seven and one plus x to the power nine but this time i only want you to go up to and including x cubed so i don't see any x to the fours x to the fives or right up to x to the nines none of that i just want up to x cubed okay so again pause it have a quick go see how you got on right so hopefully you managed to get 1 plus 7x plus 21x squared plus 35x to the power 3 plus blah 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 and all the other terms and for 1 plus x to the power 9 hopefully you got 1 plus 9x plus 36x squared plus 84x cubed right so if you just grab your notebooks out then please because what we're going to look at is what happens if you want to expand 1 plus x to the power n but unlike in year one into year two we'll be looking at that n value that power not necessarily being a natural number a number like one two three four and so on so the first thing you want to do is when you expand it if it is a natural number to the power n then what you can use is the expansion formula that you did in year one that's nothing new this is exactly what you used in year one there's nothing new there at all but if you want to expand it and it's not a natural number in other words it's just any number for n then you can use a different formula in this case you would use that formula just there notice at the end it's talking about n being a quotient a rational number something that can be expressed as a fraction including negative numbers as well now notice that some similarities in the formula but there is some important bits to it as well this formula only works if there's a number one at the front whereas the year one one didn't really matter what your a and your b values were they were just any any numbers so you can this formula only works if you have a one at the front and as long as n is any rational number also notice that unlike this formula which has a very clear start point and end point this formula always starts with the number one has this sort of um jumping up by x x squared x cubed and so on right up to x to whatever power but also it has no end point this just carries on going forever so that expansion doesn't stop right this formula that you see in here this expansion formula is also quite important because it only works where the x values are between one and minus one you have any other x values this expansion doesn't work it's not true so we'll come back to that later and see why that's important when we try to use this expansion as an approximation tool okay so let's have a look at that what I'd like you to do is obtain the first four terms in the expansion 1 over 1 plus 2x in extending powers of x All right so that's the sort of question you may get in your exam 
as an exam question. So I'll give you a chance to get that down in your notebooks and then we'll have a go at working through the answer. OK, so the first thing you should have done is thought about changing this 1 plus 2x uh, to the minus 1. So you're rewriting it in that sort of format. That will allow you to then use that formula from your formula books, that 1 plus x to the power n formula. Noting that you're using the second year skill because the power is minus 1. So you can't use the formula you learnt last year. So for this formula, we're just thinking we only want to go up to um, the first four terms. We don't want to go any further than that. So when I expand the formula, I'm thinking about one, two, three, four terms. Noticing that these three bits were given in the formula. This one I had to figure out for myself using that formula just there. It carries on going plus blah, 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 but we only care about the first one, two, three, four terms. As it's asking for there. OK, so once I'm happy with that, I do the same as what I did in my first year skill. I think about what value I'm going to use for X and what value I'm going to use for N. Now, in this case, yeah, I just said that. In this case, N is equal to minus one and X is equal to two X. That's sometimes where the confusion comes in because you're replacing the X for two X in this case. So I substitute all that in. There we go. Put all the bits and bobs into that formula. I'm very, very careful with my minus one, my n value. I'm not going to do something silly with it and accidentally forget that it's got negative on the front. And also making sure that I put my 2x inside brackets so I don't forget to do 2x squared or 2x cubed. Uh, when I simplify it out, there we go. Lo and behold, I have this formula just here. So I've got my answer as 1 plus 2x to the minus 1 as 1 minus 2x plus 4x squared minus 8x cubed. Great. Now that is what we call an approximation tool. It will allow us to approximate the value of 1 plus 1 over 2x up to the power x cubed. Now, this formula only works between minus 1 and 1. We know that, the original formula, but what's important in this case is that our x value from the formula is actually 2x. We replaced it for 2x when we did the original expansion. So we've also got to remember that when we replace this bit here, we also replace that for 2x. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this approximation is true between minus 1 and 1, but this time it is 2x that needs to go in that middle. So that means that this is approximately the same as that, but it's only valid between minus 1 over 2 and 1 over 2. So just to show you what I mean by that, grab your calculators and try typing in 1 plus 2x to the minus 1 or 1 over 1 plus 2x. But just replace the x value for something like, let's say, 3 and see what you get. So if you replace it for 3, you're going to get 1 over 1 plus 2 lots of 3, which is 6. So 1 plus 6 is 7. So a seventh. Now, if you type that in your calculator, a seventh. But then you also try typing it into this side, 1 minus 2 times 3 plus 4 times 3 squared minus 8 times 3 cubed. You'll notice that the two answers are nowhere near each other. They're totally different. That side was 1 seventh. This side had things like 3 to the power 3 in there. It's going to get really big really quickly. It's going to diverge. And that's because this approximation tool does not work if your x value is bigger than these two limits. But now what I'd like to do is try using your calculator again, but this time for an x value between these two numbers, something like 0 0.1. So if for 0 0.1, we could try 1 over 1 plus 2 lots of 0 0.1. And in that case, we're going to get 1 over 1.2. And we get an approximation for that. 
Okay, and our calculator will tell us the answer to 1 over 1.2. If we now try to put in 0 0.1 in this side, 1 minus 2 lots of 0 0.1 plus 4 times 0 0.1 squared minus 8 times 0 0.1 cubed, you should notice that the two answers you get out will be very, very similar. So the answer when you substitute 0 0.1 into that is very similar to the answer when you substitute 0 0.1 into that side. And that's why we can use this as an approximation tool for any of your form functions that look like that. OK. So let's have a look at another example. This example here, a little bit more tough because it's set up slightly differently. And straight away, I'm noticing that it's not as simple as last time because we've got an expansion on the top and an expansion underneath. So what would I need to do first of all? So feel free to have a go yourselves. And while you're doing that, just grab it down in your notebooks and we'll have a look at how to solve this exam question. Right, so this time, if you haven't noticed, you can see that you've got two very clear expansion parts. You've got the top bit, one plus X to the power seven. And in fact, one plus X to the power seven is exactly the same as what you did last year. Whereas, 1 minus 3x to the minus 2, this is going to involve you using your new skills because you've got minus 2 as a power. Again, just checking, same as last time, first four terms. So I can expand it, so I'm both of them to the power x cubed. This one's going to be 1 plus x to the power 7, so I use my formula, I can see that I've got that. In fact, that was the one I did near the start of the, start of the lesson. And for this function just here, it is valid between minus 1 and 1. So if I tried and um, expand it further, then as long as my x value is between those, it would work fine. The second one, a little bit more complicated. I've got to use the other formula. This only point is going up to the first four terms. So you can see that 1, 2, 3, first four terms. I can substitute in my x value just there which you can see there and there and there and as I emphasized before it is absolutely vital you put the minus sign inside the brackets as well as the three so when you do something like minus three squared you're going to get a positive coming out of that so just be very careful uh, the minus two is your n value so we can see that appearing there 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 and there right so this part of the function can be simplified but it only works when x is between minus one and one. And in this case, the x value is minus three x. So I can substitute my minus three x into that function, and I can see that it's going to be converted to minus a third and one over three. So there's my expansion formula just there. Right, now that I've got my two functions expanded, what I can do is I can have a go at rewriting this part and I can see they're multiplied together. And because they're multiplied together, I just need to multiply this part with this part. So that can now be expanded to that. Now these two brackets can be expanded as you would do normally. So one times one, one times six X, one times 27 X squared and so on. But what's important is you only want the first four terms. So you only want the number itself, the x value, the x squared, and the x cubed. You don't care about x to the 4, x to the 5, and so on. So when I come to expanding it, I'm not going to waste my time with things like 21x squared times by 108x cubed, because that would make x to the 5. And I don't need x to the 5, because I only need up to x cubed. So when I come to expanding it, I can ignore anything greater than x cubed. So I'll end up with those two multiplied together, 1 times all of that junk, 7x times all of that, there's no point in doing the 108, 21x times the first two bits, and 35x times the 1. I simplify all that to get that, and then I simplify it further by putting the like terms together, and there we go, I've managed to get my full expansion up to x cubed. Now what's important about this is this part just here, worked for any value between minus one and one whereas this value 
worked for any value between minus a third and a third. That's what worked. If I try to put in um, something like minus a third into this, I would get a very good approximation to if I put minus a third into that. So they'll be very, very similar. But what's important is that when you try combining these two things together, you've got to pick the smaller out of the two ranges. It's no good picking something like x equals a half because it would work in there, but it wouldn't work in there. So you out of the two ranges, you always pick the smaller out of those two. Okay, so spend some time, have a go at these exercises yourselves and join you again for the second part of this session. Okay, so let's have a look at a similar example to the previous ones, but this time we're going to look at ones that involves looking at roots. So we've got what is the cube root, excuse me, the square root of three plus X. Now, because it's a square root, we can replace the power with a half, the sort of skills you learn from GCSE and then into year one. So now that it's set up, I've noticed that the formula only works in this form. So everything's looking pretty nice. I've got the X value, the same as the X value. I've got an N value as a quotient, so that's okay with the half, but there is a problem, isn't there? We've got a one at the front, it has to be at one at the front, but unfortunately in my situation, I have a three at the front. So the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is sort that three out to make that equal to one. Now I can do this by taking a three outside the bracket. If I took a three outside the bracket, three lots of one would be perfect. So if I want to take the three outside the bracket, I'd also have to consider how that affects the X. So if I took the three outside the bracket, I would have one plus a third X or one plus X over three. OK, so I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to pull that X out, that three outside, but I must go very careful. There's a very common mistake that happens when students start taking that three outside that bracket. So you can take the three outside the bracket, which is what you have to do. But the easy mistake to forget is that that three, when you take it out, is still affected by the power. You cannot just take the three outside the bracket and leave it at the front and make it three lots of one plus a third x to the power half because unfortunately that three has to go with the half it's not a big deal but it's very easy to forget so what happens then well now because we're allowed to do this with thirds uh, and power sorry so we can bring that in indices is what i meant to say so we can bring that indices take the three to the half and th half to this part so we can expand it to that and that's the part that I said be careful with. It's not three you're actually taking out, but it's three to the power half. Okay, right, so I need to remember that at the front. So I'm going to come back to that three to the power half later. This part now, I can use the formula. So with the formula, I can see I've got one plus x to the power n. And now I can use the formula to expand this part just here. So one plus a third x to the power half. I can use my skills that I've uh, acquired from all that practice. I can put the parts inside the bracket. So the third can, X can go in for X. The half can go in for my N. I only want the first three terms in this case. So I don't need to go any further than X squared. I keep my brackets in. So I don't do something silly with that. And when I simplify it, I also need to always consider what it's valid from. So it's valid from x is between minus one and one, but in my case, x is the third. So I can put that in. It's going to be one plus one over six x minus one over 72 x squared. And it's valid between minus three and three. So that all looks fantastic, but I need to be very careful that I don't forget that I'm not just dealing with this part just here. I had to take out the three to the half. So I can actually use the formula in the first case. So at this stage, I'm going to bring that back in and put that back to the front of this. So I'm going to get three to the half, lots of all of that 
is valid between those two. You can even go as far as putting that inside if you want to and put the third back in. We can see that three to the half is root three. So really, I've got root three times one, root three times one over six, and root three times one over 72. So it's an alternative form, but it puts it back into the root situation. Okay. Again, there's nothing to stop you at this stage just here, just trying a number within the range and see whether these two sides do roughly equal each other. So for example, in this case, if you try picking, for example, the number two, all right, that's definitely within the range. And if you put the number two into here, we can see that we're dealing with root five. And if you put the number two into there and there, so two lots of that take away four lots of that, try typing those two sides in and you should see that root five is roughly the same as root three plus two lots of root three over six, take away four lots of root three over 72. It won't be exact, and you should be thinking, how can I make it more exact? Well, of course, the answer is to do more terms. You could do x cubed term, x to the four term, and so on. The more terms you produce, the better your approximation would be. So have a, quick, have a go at those exercises. Those involve ones where the number isn't one at the front. Okay, so let's look at this example. A little bit more interesting than the previous one. It's still got a standard expansion. So you're thinking binomial expansion from there. Remember that the examiner might not even mention binomial expansion. He just wants to give you something like that. You need to notice that you're going to use a binomial expansion in this. What's more interesting about this, though, is it's asking you to evaluate the cube root of 23 to two decimal places. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can grab a calculator. I can type that in and straight away I've got the answer to two decimal places. But that's not what the examiner wants you to do. He wants you to hence evaluate. So in this case, because you're hence evaluate, it means you must do the expansion on the first one. Right, so how can we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is just expand this part just here. And you've got the skills in your first year from GCSE you know that the cube root of that is the same as 1 plus x over 20 to the power of third. Use your skills you just practiced. I'll give you a chance just to expand that yourselves, see what you got. Okay, well done if you managed to get 1 plus 1 over 60x minus 1 over 3600x squared. And that's valid between x is 20 and minus 20. That's important just to recognize that bit for a minute. Right, so let's have a look. We want to evaluate the cube root of 23. Now we've got a way of expanding one plus x over 20 cube rooted. So I wouldn't blame you for looking at that and going, well, they're similar, aren't they? They're pretty much the same, except if I wrote this as one plus 22, they'll be exactly the same. Yeah, one plus 22. Now the problem with that part there being 22, that means the x value would have to be something like 440. Because 440 divided by 20 is where the 22 comes from. Ah, but that's a problem. Because if your x value is 440, this is not going to work. So we need to think of a different way. And in fact, forget the one. The one is just a bit misleading. That's not going to help you. The actual hint is the 20. What's another way of writing 23? Well, you can write it in lots of ways. 1 plus 22. You can write it as 2 plus 21. You can write it as 20 plus 3 and so on. So the biggest hint you've got is the fact the examiner's giving you this 20 just here. So that means that could be a good starting position. Let's rewrite the cube root of 23 to the cube root of 20 plus 3. I might be barking completely with the wrong tree. I might find that this doesn't work. But let's start there. And the only reason I've got that 20 is because it helps me with that hint of an individual expansion. I'll come back to seeing why that's helpful in a second. 
Right, so I've got 20 plus 3. What can I do next then? Well, I can't use this formula just here because I've got 20. Right? But what I can do is I can use the skills I practiced a little while ago. I can change that 20 to 1 by taking it outside of the formula. And in this case, I can pull the 20 outside and I'm starting to see this part just here which is very similar to that part just there. Noticing that the 20 came out and that's formed this part over 20. Right, now I can carry on using my skills. I can see that this is going to be the cube root of 20 times by the cube root of 1 plus 3 over 20. Great. Oh, look at that. That's magical. That's exactly the same there as that one just there. But the x value is 3. Oh, great because it fits inside this range. So why does that help me? Because now I can rewrite this as 1 plus 3 over 20 cubed, cube root, um, to the power third, excuse me. So now that I've got that, the previous expansion, I know that that was exactly the same as this. Notice that there's your expansion formula just there. So what does that get me? That gets me 2.714 times by 1.0475, which gives me an answer of about 2.84 to two decimal places. And hopefully, if you typed in your calculator, you would notice it is very similar to that answer just there. And that's how you would use your expansion tool, your spinal expansion, to actually get the answer that they want rather than just using your calculator. So let's have a look at one last example before we finish binary expansions. And I would like you to obtain the first four terms of the expansion 2 plus x to the power 3 over 1 plus 3x and hence evaluate 2.1 cubed. So it's a similar example to the previous one and you can see that we're going to be using our approximation tool for that 2 plus 1 cubed. So I'm going to ask you just to expand both of those. Hopefully you've looked and said, yeah, I can see where the 1 plus x to the minus 1 has come from. So feel free to use the original formula there. You don't need to use the binomial ones. You don't have to worry about the two. And you only need to expand the first four terms. OK, so hopefully you got these two answers. So we can see there. 8 plus 12x plus 6x squared, valid for all x values. Now, you might be thinking, why have I not put between minus 1 and 1? And the reason for that is because this function just here is fully expanded. It's not an approximation. It hasn't had to stop. It's gone from the first number right up to x cubed. So those two, I could put a triple lines in there because those two sides are absolutely identical in every way. It doesn't matter what x value I put in there, it will be exactly the same as on that side. So it's valid for all x values. That's important, that's not restricting me at all. But the other part, just here, when you expand that, that does restrict you because the x value, that part just there, has to be between 1 and minus 1. So therefore, I can see that the x value is going to be between minus a third and a third. OK, so that restricts me. All right, what do I get then? Well, I need to multiply these two things together. I can see that. So there's a numerator multiplied by this part just here, which if that was a one, it would be the denominator. So multiply these two parts together and I get 8 minus 12x plus 42x squared minus 125x cubed. Noticing what is valid between. That's important. Sometimes you might get asked questions on it, but every single time you could lose marks if you don't put the valid part in. So include it every single time. Get used to it now. Right, so why, why is this going to be helpful? How can I use this to answer this question, which does not want me to just use my calculator to do it? So 2.1. Where could 2.1 come from? So 2.1 has got to be something to do with this. Now to get 2.1 cubed, to get 2.1 cubed, if I look at that numerator, it's not far off if x equal to a certain value 
2.1 cubed. In fact, if I made x just as simple as 0.1, then I would have 2.1 cubed. Just double check. Yeah, 0.1 will work in the function as well. Look, it's valid between these two numbers. 0.1 works. So is it as simple as making that numerator 0.1? OK, so let's try that. Let's put it in and use that fact. So 2.1 cubed. So this side just here, I know is equal to this part just here. So if I put in x equals 0.1, then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have 2 plus 0.1 cubed, just there. I'm going to have 1 plus 3 times 0.1 from the numerator. And I know that's equal to this side with 0.1 in. They're approximately equal to each other. That's what that symbol is there. They're not exactly the same. They're approximately equal to each other. So what I can do now is I can simplify some of this out. Now that numerator is exactly what I want, isn't it? It's 2.1 cubed. The denominator, 1.3. And this side, with a bit of number crunching, is going to be 7.095. Now I want 2.1 cubed. I want 2.1 cubed. So what will I need to do? Just multiply by 1.3. So that implies... 2.1 cubed is the same as 1.3 times 7.095. Hence, my answer is 9.22, and that's correct to two decimal places. Grab your calculators, have a look. Do you get approximately the same answer? Always a nice way to check. So that concludes the binomial expansion work. What I'd like you to do is just practice that exercise at the end, and there's some of the more tricky questions you might get on binomial expansion. Thank <laughs> you.